Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Friday, November 16th, 2012, and I'm Darko. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description, so please check them out. Alright, um, my plan here for today's reports are the first video to be uh, basically Israel gang, because I do have some, uh, some news for that. And the second and third video will be um, some War on Terror, Liberty, Sovereignty, and uh, followed with some economy and possibly eugenics. So... Israel vs. Hamas, Deadly Theater. The West created and runs Israel, Hamas, the Free Syrian Army, and the Muslim Brotherhood. When the public needs to be manipulated, a deadly ballet ensues. The Western allied funded, armed, and directed sectarian extremist organizations, namely Al-Qaeda, the Muslim Brotherhood, and their subsidiaries of Hamas and the so-called Free Syrian Army, were created and to this day are backed specifically to counter real opposition to Western, Western designs of hegemony across the Muslim world. The West has also created and continues to perpetuate Israel as it exists in the current state, a purposely provocative militant nation that serves as a beachhead for Western objectives throughout the region, as well as a per, uh, perpetual impetus sorry, for filling the ranks of extremist groups who are then turned loose against West enemies. While Israel conducts combat operations against Hamas and Gaza, they are supporting their affiliates in Syria just across the border upon Golan Heights and across greater Syria in coordination with the U.S., France, England, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar. And something I just covered uh, recently, it was yesterday actually, as well was what uh, land destroyers covering. While U.S. representatives frequently meet in Doha, Qatar to support and continue propping up the political front, serving as a cover for Western Saudi Qatari-backed terrorists in Syria, Qatar's unelected leadership for life has slinked in and out of Gaza to pour $250 million into Hamas just before the latest Israeli-Hamas violence broke out. And finishing up, you can check this out. Link will be posted. Israel created Hamas. The Wall Street Journal reported in their article how Israel helped to spawn Hamas that, uh, to my regret, is Israel's creation, says Mr. Cohen, a Tunisian-born Jew who worked in Gaza for more than two decades, responsible for religious affairs in the region until 94. Mr. Cohen watched the Islamist movement take shape, muscle aside secular Palestinian rivals, and then morph into what is today Hamas, a militant group that is sworn to Israel's destruction. But it's all about the divide and conquer. That's what I was talking about, having um, uh, Muslims attacking Christians, having uh, Muslims attacking Muslims all around the world. This, in fact, is exactly what Hamas is still being used for today, to counter real opposition movements by dividing against each other different factions of Muslims and secular organizations alike in confusing uh, in confusion and armed combat preventing a greater unified front against Western expansion and exploitation through the region. These extremist groups closely aligned to Hamas including Al-Qaeda and Muslim Brotherhood would flood into Iraq during the US occupation to serendipitously disrupt united Sunni Shia resistance and create bloody infighting that broke the back of the meaningful opposition against foreign occupation. Then I'll, I'll leave you with this quote, and then we'll move on, from Benzian Natyahu. This is a quote, The Bible finds no worse image than this of the man from the desert. And why? Because he has no respect for any law. Because in the desert he can do as he pleases. The tendency towards conflict is in the essence of the Arab. He is an enemy by essence. His personality won't allow him any compromise or agreement. It doesn't matter what kind of resistance he will meet, what price he will pay. His existence is one of perpetual war. Israelis must be the same. The two-state solution doesn't exist. There are no two people here. There is a Jewish people and an Arab population. That's interesting how he says that. Jewish people and Arab masses who doesn't consider people. There is no Palestinian people, so you don't create a state for an imaginary nation. They only call themselves a people in order to fight the Jews. So then the IDF is saying they will continue operations until Gazans give in. They will continue carrying out these ops until terrorists in Gaza cry for a ceasefire. We will continue until the opposing side say, enough, we can't take anymore. It goes on and says that they have operative plans in place for ground operations and will use them if necessary. So, and this is uh, right before we get to this. Israeli officials talk long war in Gaza and prepare invasion 
says tanks and armored vehicles poured into southern Israel today while busloads of soldiers were brought to the front as a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip, the first since 2009, seems to be closer. Israeli officials have condemned Hamas for retaliating against their attacks, terming the retaliation a double war crime. And airstrikes have been a virtual constant against the tiny strip over the past day with large numbers of civilian casualties. Israeli Defense Minister approves summons of 30,000 soldiers for Gaza operation. So Barak has approved the 30,000 reserve soldiers. They can be called into action by the military at any point. Then we have, this was actually breaking news after I saw the other article from RT. Israel approves 75,000 troops for possible Gaza ground operation. During Operation Cast Lead in 2008, Israel mobilized some 10,000 reserves in preparation for the ground incursion. It says uh, 16,000 of which have already been mobilized from the 30,000 that uh, were basically approved just recently. Uh, the IAF, Israeli Air Force, hits 70 Gaza targets after rockets trigger sirens. It says the Air Force struck some 70 targets in the Gaza Strip in one hour Thursday night. Goes on and says that Gazans fired over 300 rockets in the south, killing three Israelis, while 16 Palestinians were killed. So you have a Gaza missile range infographic. I recommend you come check this out. Talking about retaliation, they asked what can Gaza do as far as its rockets penetrating and assuming they can bypass the Israeli Iron Dome defense shield. Goes on and says from Stratford, they explain it. Uh, it goes on here, it says it's relevant in the context of Daimona Nuclear Power Plant, which is actually all the way over here, which at least, at first, blush appears unreasonable. After all, if Gaza really wanted to unleash the gates of hell on Israel, it would focus all of its firepower precisely on this one spot. So here you go, here's uh, Gaza, and uh, six miles, approximately maximum range of this uh, Qasem uh, missile or rocket. Then uh, followed by that, you have this a 12 mile a grad rocket and then you have this other one that's uh, 28 miles right on the border the west bank this uh, Fajir 3 rocket then we have Palestinians shoot down Israeli F-16 fighter jet in Gaza says Hamas I uh, don't know how much uh, validity there is to this uh, claim but they say Palestinian fighters have downed an Israeli warplane flying over the Gaza Strip as retaliatory rockets attack from the enclave continue to sound alarms across Israel and just to give you an idea, it says uh, several Israelis were injured after three rockets fired from Gaza hit a settlement of Gusht uh, Etzion, Al Quds, Jerusalem. But it says the missiles and rockets have also hit other Israeli cities of Tel Aviv, uh, Eshkol, Ashdod, Eshkelon, and Beersheba. So, and uh, remember, here's a little map right here: Beersheba. There's Tel Aviv all the way up there. Ashdod, just to give you an idea of what's going on there. Um, next up, we have Israel's Barak seeks three more Iron Dome rocket interceptors. So there, he was actually saying that uh, none of the rockets are actually penetrating into Israel. I like that uh, sexual innuendo, you know, just like George Carlin said. <laughs> but uh, for whatever it's worth, he was saying he was chucking it up as propaganda on, on uh, behalf of Hamas and the Palestinians. But uh, they may have actually been uh, uh, getting over there and doing some damage because they're asking for more funds to for uh to buy some more iron dome rocket systems a teacher and children are among slain as gaza toll rises so it says here that uh, the more recent deaths suggest uh, strikes are having a big impact on gaza's civilian population it's left 24 dead and 200 wounded in gaza and a total of three israelis have died from rocket fire coming out of gaza there's a u.n teacher that i reported on the other day also um it says here this 11 month year old son of a bbc reporter and the Gaza parents of baby killed in Israeli airstrike ask why. They said, we're only civilians, so why did Israel do this? The mortar blast also killed his brother's wife. They said they were hiding in the hallway and decided to leave because they felt they were in danger. But before they could go back to bring her baby son, the Israeli missiles struck. So they said they just want to live in peace and they want the violence to stop. Hamas commander um, killed in Israel's Gaza attack. So the Apparently, he was killed in an Israeli airstrike. Next up, long-term peace was within reach before Israeli attack. Remember, I titled that video, and I went through all of this about the tactics of the Zionists. And um, it was all laid out about how uh, peace for them is conflict. They don't want peace. That's, that doesn't serve their interest. They have to have chaos all the time. They have to have people hating them. It actually 
uh, it plays into their hands. So, yeah, I covered this about how peace, they actually, there's peace uh, deals being brokered. Israel has chosen to attack Gaza in order to avoid reaching a longer-term peace settlement that was being negotiated with the help of Hamas military leader who was assassinated, assassinated in an Israeli strike on Wednesday, says an Israeli activist. Then we have U.S.-Israel finish largest ever joint military exercise. So they called it Austere Challenge 2012. It was deemed a success by military observers from the U.S. European Command and the IDF. So it just happened to just happened to be exercising, right? UK blames Hamas for a Gaza escalation. I love that, isn't it? Uh, urged end to rocket fires. They like to blame the uh, like to blame the victim, which is really the Palestinian people. Remember, you know, like we we're saying, this is just a front that triggers it all. Secretary Haig says Hamas attacks create an intolerable situa situation for residents of Israel's south. Well, what do you think it's been doing for the to the Palestinians for all these years? BBC forced to make another apology as chief rabbi microphone is left on during the radio interview, and he blames Iran for the Gaza conflict. He quickly backtracks, saying a continued prayer for peace is needed. Then next up, we have hypocrisy of slaughter, Israel's Orwellian account of Gaza campaign. It says Israel's assault on Gaza raises doubts that it has any interest in finding the lasting peace settlement it proclaims it wants. They ask the question, does the campaign have an alternative objective as part of a strategy to engineer a strike on Iran? For almost 65 years now, Israel has been bombing, maiming, and humiliating the Palestinians, bulldozing their homes and placing Gaza in lockdown mode, and turning it into the world's largest concentration camp. Remember, I covered that too. That's, that's psychological, what they're doing there. They want them to get pissed. So in 2009, it was called Operation Cast Lead Revisited. This time, they're dubbing it Operation Pillar of Defense. It says Israeli right-wingers do not want a peaceful agreement with the Palestinians, and that's why they've systematically sabotaged all possibility of reaching a two-state solution. AIPAC praises Obama for backing Israel amid Gaza fighting. The American-Israeli or Israel Public Affairs Committee on Thursday praised the Obama regime for their strong support for the Zionist state's self-defense as well as the strong support for members of Congress from both parties. The quota is saying, these statements demonstrate that America continues to firmly stand with Israel and her right to defend herself. Egypt says they will pay everything to end Israeli aggression on Gaza. So again, more talk, right? More empty talk. And when it's funny that he says that they say they're going to pay everything, because I just covered yesterday, they just received an EU loan of like millions or billions of dollars along with an IMF loan of like four billion dollars so I guess that's what they mean they're gonna pay everything like I said they're a Western proxy Muslim Brotherhood and Warzai though Islamist ally of Hamas Egypt leaders handling of Gaza crisis mirrors Mubarak's it says Egypt's wannabe fake phony Muslim president may hail from a fiercely anti-Israeli Muslim Brotherhood right <laughs> proxy an ally of Gaza's Hamas rulers, again, another proxy. But in the first major crisis over Israel, he is adopting a stance not unlike that of uh, Al's predecessor, Hazni Mubarak, Israel's longtime friends. He like They like to say that, but he probably wasn't. Remember what I said? It's another tactic, it's psychological um, disinformation. They, they, they paint leaders like that as if they're pro-Zionist and they're possibly even Jews, and it gets their own people all hating them. So, you know what I mean? Then they take the opposition... Uh, the West or the Zionists, whoever, and they co-opt that, and they and they stir it up, and they inflame it, and they use it. Pretty big news here. Pentagon says 75,000 troops might be needed to seize serious chemical weapons. Remember, chemical weapons are tied to not only Hezbollah, but Iran. So this is all part of the show, little pieces of the chess game. The Pentagon has told the Obama regime that any military effort to seize serious stockpiles of chemical weapons that would require up to 75,000 troops amid uh, concern at the militant group. Here we go. Hezbollah has set up small training camps close to some chemical weapons. This is interesting because so far I'm under the impression that what? Obama and the regime has avoided direct intervention. There's been a lot of troops and exercises in Jordan, so this is kind of interesting. U.S. not impressed with Arab Spring reaching Jordan. Thousands of Jordanians call for the king to stop playing with fire, protesting against corruption and sharp increase in gas and petrol prices. So this is the same thing that triggered the Arab Spring, right? We know it was provocateur and everything, but they can turn the knobs if they want to, the globalists. Playing with prices, food prices, and that is like playing with fire. So 
The U.S. does not have any, um, uh, they don't win by having instability in Jordan. That's a good state, a buffer state uh, from which to attack Syria with ground troops and that.